the beginning of the end in three, two, one, action. Yeah, time to do a little bit more math, everybody. So um, Mr. Wheeler just recently went over um, how to complete the square, how to get that problem ready to square, but we're gonna now use that as a method to go ahead and actually solve some quadratics. So let's uh, jump over here to the document cam so we can see, um, see some work here. So we're gonna start off with, with a simple example of a, a quadratic where the leading coefficient is one. Now quite frequently when we have these problems, uh, solving by completing the square is usually considered when A is equal to one, because when it's not, we usually pick a different method. But the first thing that, we, that I personally tell my students to do is kind of set the table. I don't like having this four sitting in this position, so what I would tell my students to do first is to move that across, which of course means we would add four to both sides. Now that step right there is actually not necessary, and if you watch other presenters do this, sometimes they don't do that, but that's my personal favorite. And so, um, as you saw in Mr. Wheeler's last video, if you take this eight right here and you cut it in half, remember cut half of eight is four, and if we square that, we're gonna get 16. So I'm gonna add 16 to this side to create that perfect square that we were looking for. However, I can't do that if I don't then also add that 16 to the other side. So I now have this nice perfect square because four times four is 16 and four plus four is eight. And so we're looking at x plus four quantity squared is 16. I will continue to beat that horse. When we take the square root of both sides, I have x plus four is plus or minus the square root of 20. Now we do have to tangle with this a little bit because the number 20 would be two times 10, but of course 10 is two times five. So we have ourselves a nice little pair. So we could express this problem as x plus four is plus four minus two square roots of five. Now, of course, I wanna finish by getting x 100% by itself, and so we just need to move this four to the other side. And we now have a perfect solution that x is negative four plus or minus two roots of five. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but when we do these problems frequently, the best method is to try to factor first so, you know, if we did our little method where we put A up here and B down here, is there any way that I could actually factor that? And, and, and that answer is no, which is confirmed by the fact that our answer here was irrational. Now, in number two, we're going to look at uh, a problem. We had a positive in this problem, so we're going to try a negative. Um, so I have X squared uh, minus 10X plus 24 is zero. And uh, so just like the previous problem, I'm gonna go ahead and move this 24 to the other side to kind of set the table. And I need to take this negative 10 right here, I cut it in half, which of course is gonna be negative five. But if I square that, I'm gonna get 25, so no sweat there. And I ha now have this nice little story that had an X, it had the half of 10 was five, but of course that was negative and negative 24 and 25 is one. So we're gonna take the square root of both sides. And what's interesting about that <clears throat> is the square root of one, of course, is exactly one. Well, that's kind of a curious result because I don't actually have a radical. There's nothing left in my hand. So I get rational answers. I mean, that's just kind of nice. I get x equals six because a positive one and five makes six. And of course, a negative one and five makes four. So the two answers that I have are here, which actually tells you that we could have been smarter about this problem and set it up and solved by factoring like we did before. But you know what, sometimes you pick what somebody might argue is the wrong solution, but who cares? It didn't take us that long to solve. And so sometimes it's a nice little validation of um, just what we did. So the, the other way that we can solve these problems often occurs, um, you know, when we have a leading coefficient that is not one, but the first one I am actually gonna take a look at when it is one. So I'm gonna take a look at the same problem that we did a moment ago, and you wanna recall that we had that answer earlier as negative four plus or minus two roots of five was equal to x, okay? 
So when I'm all said and done, the, the beauty of math is we can pick all these different paths, but no matter what, we should come up with an answer, which is one of the things that Mr. Wheeler and I like so much about math. Darn English teachers think that their opinion sometimes matters, but we don't care. We get an answer and it works whether we did it one way or another. I love that. Math just makes it comforting that way. So anyway, we want to remember that if you have a quadratic, which is an equation that looks of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, that's by the way super important, has to be equal to zero, that this can be solved using the quadratic formula, which was opposite B, plus or minus. Now you can do the Macarena if you want to, but I don't choose to. Minus 4AC all over 2A. It's a big, nasty formula. I actually personally like completing the square better, which was what we did a moment ago, but this works good too. So in this case, A would be one, B would be eight, and C is a big negative four. So um, I also noticed that when I was in high school, I messed this up, and, and I see a lot of my students messing that up too. They forget to put this x equals in front, because remember, that's what we're looking for, is the value of x that makes this story true. So we're going to take the opposite of b, which is negative 8. We're going to take b, and we're going to square that. Now, some people actually write 8, and they put a square next to it. I just do that in my head. Minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. Now, order of operations can really get you. Uh, this square root is part of the e part of PEMDAS. The square root is technically an exponent, but that also there is a parentheses that is implied around that whole thing. So before we can simplify that radical, we need to go inside that and simplify that as much as possible, which means I need to multiply all this stuff together first. And as it turns out, four times one times four is 16. We've got the product of two negatives, which is a positive. And we're getting close because now I'm down to here. Uh-oh, I, I, I should be done, but if you look right here, I don't have the same answer that I had right here. So it appears that maybe I made a mistake, but I think it's just that we need to do a little bit of simplification. And I noticed that the number 80 is a 4 times 20. But a 20 is a 4 times a 5. So 4, 4, 5. So I just ended up with negative 8 plus or minus, I've got my pair of 4s. Well, we're, we're getting closer, but notice since this 2 is underneath the entire thing, that means not only is the 8 going to be divided by 2, so is this part right here. And so I'm looking at a final answer of negative eight divided by two and four roots of five divided by two is two roots of five. And hey, what do you know? We got exactly the same answer. So that was fantastic. So one last example and then the year is over. Yeah, you heard that right. So we're gonna make one that's a little bit, well, this might look harder x, 3x squared. We got 13 x's, and we're going to set that sucker equal to 10. Now, I obviously messed this up already because it's not equal to zero, and that is an undeniable requirement of our story. You have to always make this problem equal to zero. So my story is going to have a is 3, b is going to be the number positive 13. Oh man, I hate that. When I square that, that's going to get big. And C is going to be not positive, but negative 10 this time. So off we go. So X equals, remember, don't forget that part, opposite B plus or minus the square root of B squared. Oh, by the way, you guys always know that if you square something, you do get a positive. And it's worth noting that my calculator is kind of stupid. If I told it to take negative five and square it, I get negative 25. And, and, and I hate when people do that, take their calculator out and do work that they could have done themselves because of course we should have asked this kind of question um, because calculators actually do understand order of operations. So please try to do that square in your head. So minus four A C all over two A. Uh, do a little quick simplification. 4 times 3 times 10 is 120. We're looking at 289, which is not a number that I'm super familiar with, but you know what? Let's just play with it. I, I, mean, I mean, let's just see if we got lucky. 
And what do you know? The square root of 289 is exactly 17, which means there's nothing left in my hand, go fish wise. So my two answers would be negative 13 plus 17 or four over six. And my secondary answer would be negative 30, negative 13 minus seven. Oh, we should reduce this, shouldn't we? Oh, that's right. That should be x equals two thirds or negative 30 divided by six is negative five. And in parting, you know what? That was silly. We could have actually taken this problem and factored it to 3x times x. We could have put a plus five here. We could have put a minus two right there being equal to zero. And we could have solved that problem very, very rapidly by factoring. But you know what? Let's face it. Sometimes we don't see those factors and we just did a slightly harder solution, but it worked. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are done with advanced math two. Every Wheeler summer. and Penner are done. Do well.